This video will explain how to set up an interactive video activity in your LMS as a teacher. This tool allows videos to be enriched with question cards and discussion threads, making it easy for students to engage with audiovisual content and come to class prepared. You can create a new interactive video activity in your LMS, or you can reuse an existing activity which has been saved as a template. For now, let's start with a fresh activity and look through each step to see the different configurations. You can also skip to a particular step in the timeline or description of this video. In a new assignment, we'll need to upload a video and type in a title before the Save button will appear. The title and video can always be changed later. In step 1, we'll leave instructions for students to set expectations and provide guidance for the activity. With the Add Items button, you can attach multimedia such as an audio or video recording or a document or picture. And under Student Collaboration, you can determine whether students' contributions are visible to the whole class or only within groups. When choosing groups, these will be imported from your LMS, otherwise you can set them up manually. Next, in step 2, we can add questions and discussion threads to our video. Clicking Open Video opens an interface where the media is displayed alongside a sidebar containing contributions from yourself and eventually students. In the timeline of the video, the red plus icon, when clicked on, allows you to add either a question card or a discussion thread. When selecting Question Card, you'll choose between Multiple Choice Question or Open Question. For multiple choice questions, you can type your question and attach a file if needed. Below, you'll be able to type out responses, selecting which are correct, if applicable. The Add Answer button does exactly that, and the Bin icon allows you to delete options. Additionally, you can make the question a question break or a locked question, requiring it to be answered before students can access the rest of the video. You can also enable answer explanations, which are displayed to students after they select an answer. You can also allow multiple answers to be selected if there are indeed multiple correct responses. And you can enable scratch off mode, which provides more than one chance for students to select the right answer. After everything looks right, you can press publish at the bottom to save your question or the back button at the top to go back to the choice selection. Let's now look at open questions. With open questions, you have the possibility to include a model answer, which is displayed to students after they respond. Additionally, you can make a locked question like before, as well as choosing whether or not to display anonymized answers from the rest of the class or group. Lastly, you can enable students to reply to answers to this question, opening the possibility for a discussion to take place inside the question thread. For now, let's move on to discussion threads. With discussion threads, you can invite responses on a written prompt and add multimedia using the plus icon. As before, it's possible to turn this into a question break to give more structure to the activity. And after publishing, clicking on the three dots at the top of the sidebar gives you the option to edit or delete a prompt. To see all your prompts, you can click in the timeline on the dots or locks and click on the pop-up and you can see an overview of all contributions by clicking the back arrow at the top of the sidebar. Clicking again on the cross will close the sidebar and enlarge the video and you can reopen the sidebar by clicking on the arrow icon. Lastly, in this interface, you can sort contributions by creation date, location and number of upvotes and comments and filter contributions to show everything, just your prompts, or just those of students. That's it for this stage of the setup. Let's click in the top left on the back arrow to go back to the main screen. Below the open video area, you'll see in video activities, which overviews the contributions you have made in the activity. Now let's look at the additional options. If we click on a setting, we'll see the subsettings. Firstly, scheduling deadlines determines when students can access the material. Toggling this option allows you to set a time window in which the material can be accessed. If, for instance, we set students can start on this task to after a certain date, we'll see the date picker appear and can determine the start date of the exercise. The same goes for this task closes. Here you can click on the overview icon to see what exactly students can do, depending on your configurations, and the other icon here 
allows you to grant individual extensions by typing in student names and picking a new date to apply to that person or persons. Deadline extensions will appear at the bottom here and can be edited with the Manage button. Clicking on the top of this setting again will collapse the menu and show an overview of the configurations you've chosen. Next, Student Contribution determines whether students can only respond to your prompts as a teacher or whether they can create their own discussion threads and question cards. If student questions are enabled, you can also choose anonymized answers from other peers to be displayed to students after they've responded to those questions. Following this, the Anonymity setting allows you to make discussion threads and replies anonymous, replacing students' names with fruity pseudonyms. Do note that as a teacher, you will always be able to see who's who. Next, copyright protection determines whether material can be downloaded by students. And lastly, subtitles allows you to add a subtitles file, such as an SRT file. For more information on how to create subtitles and which file types are allowed, check out our Help Center articles. Now let's take a look at the optional additional steps that can be added to an interactive video activity. At the bottom of the activity, clicking the red plus icon shows you the options. We can add a grading module to make this a summative activity. With participation grading, we can let students select their best contributions. And with reflect on activity, students can write a written reflection. For now, let's add a grading step and see which different parts of the activity can be graded. Pressing Add will add the step, and clicking on Configure will open a dialog where you can determine how students gain points and how many points are given for each step. Finally, it's vital that the total percentage points totals 100% and no more or less. After adjusting for that, we can click Done and our changes will be saved. The last option here, under Grading Options, can make this activity a pass-fail, letting us set a percentage required to pass or we can just keep it as percentage. And now we're all set up, so we can navigate to the top right and press save before publishing the activity in our LMS. The three dots in the top right now let us create a template from this activity, send a copy to a colleague, or with preferences, access general settings such as language and accessibility. And if at any time you need assistance setting up, you can reach out to us by clicking on the blue support icon in the bottom left of the screen. Expert human help is just minutes away, 24 hours a day on weekdays. So don't hesitate to get in touch and see the fruits of your feedback.